The year is 2159. Haram virus destroyed entire humanity and eventually all the zombies starved to their second death. But life on Earth always finds its way to create something new. Turns out that THV can affect animals to the point where it actually grows their intelligence and mutates them into humanoid creatures. After years of evolution, these creatures eventually found human tools and used them to hunt bugsnacks, but apparently the food now grew legs on their own and mutated into thoughtless beasts ravaging the settlements of the new you won't. You play as the journalist and you hunt down snacks to provide for the village. You are sent to find your missing world colleague Lisbeth on this island. The island provides a massive open world experience with multiple biomes. The gameplay consists mainly of hunting and collecting countless bug snacks with various tools provided to you throughout rich story told in beautiful immersive cutscenes. You can find additional lore in each item description and environmental storytelling and it enhances the story even further. This is a story about a lot of drugs, despair and finding true friendship at your lowest. I'm back in town after a narrow escape from a pack of vicious bug snacks. Just in time for a gorgeous doctor to treat my grievous wound. Well, this gorgeous doctor thinks you're an idiot. Oh, well that stings. And after I face those snacks just for you. Don't joke around. I, I don't want you taking risks to impress me. But you are impressed, yes? Ow. You're lucky it's such a shallow cut. And stop squirming around, or I'll have to restrain you. Bigger, Bill. Not while the camera is on. Trying to look strong for your audience? <clears throat> so, how's it look, Bill? Think I'll be up and hunting soon? No, you need to stay a while, Liz. Aw, Bigger, Bill. You miss me that much? I just want you in peak hunting condition. <laughs> uh, speaking of... You haven't seen the haul from my latest excursion. Ooh, did you bring me something good? You tell me. It's a brand new snack, and you'll be the first to try it. Oh, Liz, you spoil me. The story begins with you falling off the ship that is attacked by the massive unknown beast. You run for your life in a sequence wildly resembling Far Cry 3. You fall on your head, and after waking up, you find a random guy. Turns out he's fiending. You have to bring him back snack that will pick him up or otherwise he'll get shivers. After giving him a strawberry, you look at his arm. It turned into the thing he ate. He introduces himself as Philbo and you both go to the nearest cave. Turns out it's inhabited by his ex-girlfriend. She's still mad at him for overdosing on bug snacks a lot of times despite being a junkie on her own. She sends him off and wants you to collect some bug snacks for her as a part of tutorial cause you're new on the island. You interview her and find out why she is living in the cave outside the city. She says that after she broke up with Philbo she couldn't afford the rent and had to leave. She's mad at him for not providing for her and admits that he introduced her to Bugsnacks and he's the reason why she's addicted now. After that you and Philbo arrive to Snacksburg. It serves you as a hub to rest and talk to other creatures. It's a new day and you are immediately given some new tasks to bring Bugsnacks to other town folk. You meet various characters such as Farmer that his wife left him cause he overdosed and now he replaced her for a cactus. Or a one hit wonder singer that wants to take more and more bug snacks to get inspiration for another song. It's a sad place and the city is basically not functioning cause everyone is only craving for cheap easy to catch bug snacks rather than drop the addiction and fix their life. 
After a long day of catching bug snacks and doing quests, you all meet up around the campfire. Everyone opens up about their addiction and talk about their life experience. Fibo wants you to eat a strawberry bug snack, but when you do so, you immediately feel sick. Turns out you are allergic to bug snacks and you can't eat them. You come back to the campfire, but suddenly you hear farmer getting angry at guy named Grumble. He's mad because Grumble was holding bug snacks rather than eating them or giving them to other people. Grumble says that bug snacks were never supposed to be consumed and they are his family. He is the only clean guy in the entire city and everyone is mad about it. It's called peer pressure. But he still refuses to eat them. After the farmer had enough, he just left the party and now you have time to interview Grumble about your missing friend. He acts strange, cutting meat, answering and talking in a weird tone. After that you interview the farmer. He admits that he's sorry about overdosing and wants you to go to his wife and apologize on his behalf. She's residing in a canyon doing archaeology stuff. When you arrive there, you meet a guy with Max Payne's tie on his neck. He introduces himself as Max Payne too, no questions asked. He sells some stuff and wants to cut a deal. The journalist has to catch some bug snacks in order for Max to open the passage to next bio. But the bug snacks he wants are hard to catch cause they are high in the mountains. But right beside him you find farmer's wife, Trifony. You say to her that the farmer is sorry and wants her to come back but she refuses until you catch some bug snacks for her. Turns out that after she left the city she succumbed to the addiction, joining the circle but couldn't admit it to her husband cause she knew that if he found out he would want to take bug snacks together with her and it would end badly. So she decided to stay in canyon and try to quit but she admits that she can't and she's addicted now. So you bring her some bug snacks for her last hit and she says that she will go back to Snacksburg and try to quit the addiction with her husband. When you both arrive to Snacksburg, you observe Trifani confiding to her husband. He accepts everything and wants to quit bug snacks with her. She thanks you for giving her strength and the farmer thanks you for bringing her back. After some further exploring, you meet a singer named Wiggle. She says that she made only one song that was popular but succumbed to cheap bug snacks and couldn't create another hit. She sends you to look for rare bug snacks to give her motivation and inspiration. After eating a lot of bug snacks, she admits that she doesn't have that spark anymore and even with the rare high grade bug snacks, she still can't find her tune. You convince her to go to Snacksburg where everyone tries to quit addiction and go on rehab and she agrees as she doesn't want to die to the addiction. She also says that now she wants to create music for herself rather than appeal to everyone else. Surprise! I'm back early! And have I got a story for you! Bill, are you okay? I'm worthless. That's not true. You're just having one of those days. Every day is one of those days. Did something happen? Everything happened. Trifony broke her leg. Gramble got food poisoning. I couldn't help both of them. Everybody was shouting at me. I didn't know what to do. That's... None of that's your fault. What's the point if I can't help anybody? I just sit here all day while everybody else is out there all productive and happy. That's not true. You help me all the time. Like when I cut my paw. You only got hurt because you were getting snacks from me. You'd be fine if I wasn't around. Don't say that. I need you, Bill. You were there when the world was laughing at me. You were there for me during the worst days of my life. I'm here for you, too. The world can suck an egg. I know what'll make you feel better. Yeah, thanks, Liz. I'd fall to pieces without you. It's another night and everyone gathers around the campfire. This time the atmosphere is more calm and everyone has a good time when suddenly you hear someone breaking into old meal house. It's a guy named Chandlu. He lives in the mountains with his friend named Snorpy. He says that he came back for some stuff, he left and asks Fibo if a girl named Shelda is in the town. But Fibo says that she left the town after some kind of fight. You all go back to the campfire calling it a night and everyone goes back to sleep. The next day you go to the mountains to look for Chandlo and Bug Snacks Max ordered a while ago. When you arrive, Snorpy doesn't want to let Chandlo in because he's mad that Chandlo went to town without him. 
so Chandler lifts the crib and eventually Snorpy opens the door. He lets you in and you chat a little. Turns out that Chandler is clean and Snorpy doesn't want him to take any bug snacks because he knows how dangerous they are. He explains that Chandler has an obsession about being strongest guy in the snacks book and wants to take some bug snacks to enhance his abilities. But Snorpy knows that bug snacks don't give any abilities and the only thing it gives is a short high and body deformations. After a quick interview Snorpy sends you to catch some bug snacks for testing. When you give them to him he tells you that Chandler wanted to help with looking for his balls. Turns out it's about basketball balls, yet Chandler being a comedian behaves so ecstatic about it and purposefully talks about it in a suspicious way. Problem is, I lost my balls. They're stuck all over the place. I'm sure I could get them down without your help, but Snorpy made that grapple thing for me and I want to see it in action. Alright, you got my balls back! That grapple thing is awesome! While you look for his balls, in the meantime he ate a couple of snail snacks. He admits that he always wanted to be a better climber and believed that his special and bug snacks will work on him differently. When you arrive to the crib, turns out that Snorpy ate the bug snacks you gave him for scientific purposes and when he sees that Chandler ate some too, he breaks down and admits that now they both have a problem with addiction. Snorpy says that he failed Chandler and wants to go on a rehab with him, so they both go to Snacksburg. After these events you go back to Max's place to try to convince him to go on a rehab rather than take the bug snacks, but he says that he doesn't know if he's strong enough to do it and threatens you that if you don't give them, he will kill you. You give him the bug snacks and he opens the passage, but when you are about to cross it, it collapses. Max breaks down, apologizing that he almost killed you and the threats before were not serious and he just wanted the bug snacks. He says that he will try the rehab at Snacksburg to fix himself cause it's not the first time he almost killed someone. Damn, 1000! You scoping my form? Egg? Uh, eight! Uh. Uh, hey Egg bro! Good workout today! Let's hit the showers. No, this is pathetic. I won't break yet. Whoa, that's hard boiled, Egg. Who lit a fire under you? I just need to get strong enough to catch my own bug snacks. No disrespect, but you've been hitting the snacks pretty hard already. Aw, not you too. No, oh, no. I'm saying you aren't doing this for snacks alone. I can't help you if you're not honest with me. I'm just so sick of feeling like an empty shell. I want to stop relying on everybody else. I want to keep up with Liz for once in my life. Respect. I know things are tough with Liz right now. But dog, she loves you. You two will be back to normal in no time. But I don't want to go back to normal. I don't want her worrying about me anymore. <laughs> When you love somebody, you never stop worrying about them. I know. And I'm worried about her, too. I just want to take better care of her. And that starts with me. Yeah, I get that. I will get you there. Thanks, Chanlo. And, uh, ooh, maybe I'll hit the showers after all. I smell rotten. The path to the biggest mountain is open. On the way to the top you meet Agabo, the girl from the tapes. She's in a rough state, wearing an eye patch and seemingly ate some bug snacks to survive in the cold. She explains that she disappeared from Snacksburg to look for Lisbeth, but she couldn't find her anywhere and now she resides on the mountain because she found a mysterious door that may lead her closer to the truth. But to open the door she needs a code that Lisbeth had scattered across various lockers in her house. Fortunately you already have majority of the code, but the last piece lays in the boiling bay. You arrive to the bridge that was leading to sizzling sands and you find Chandler and he tells you that he fixed the bridge as a thank you for the rehab. He tells you to look out for Shelda because she went there to search for some kind of enlightenment or something. Chandler wants you to bring her to the community so she can help the others on their path. When you find her, you help her with a couple of tasks that are supposed to carry meaning but because the journalist is a non-believer, he thinks it's just a bunch of crap. 
but eventually she agrees to go to Snacksburg. She sets up a box there for you to donate back snacks. She doesn't explain what for, but after a day you find out why. Turns out she was a hardcore addict, and once she came back to Snacksburg society, she couldn't stay clean anymore. She ate the bug snacks you donated to her and denied it, despite that her arms changed into the bug snacks. She says that she's very sorry, but she can't do it alone, and she needs her friend Flufty to stay clean again. Flufty resides in Boiling Bay, where the last clue is. Okay, let her fly, and I'll show you my incredible aim. Just try not to hit Philbo again. When you're finished with your amusements, come see me. We have work to do. Get out of here, Floofty. You're ruining my shot. What's wrong? There's something off about that grumpus. Floofty's not so bad. They're just passionate about science. Sure, science. I heard about their experiments, messing with your body. It's weird. What's weird about it? I mean, look at you. How many bug snacks have you had? Hey! In my professional medical opinion, I am perfectly healthy. We're all eating bug snacks, and we're all fine, so why are you getting on my case? I'm just worried, Bill. You're not acting like yourself. You mean I'm not miserable. I found a way to make myself useful and happy to finally take some control over my life, and you're just upset because it doesn't involve you! I'm not upset. If you don't need me anymore, that's great. Go be with Floofty. Maybe I will! When you arrive to Boiling Bay, you meet Floofty. She's a scientist and she's testing bug snacks. She needs you to find some bug snacks and feed them to her to check if her missing leg can heal. After you do so, you both notice that bug snacks actually replace her leg and it's fully functioning. The next experiment is meant to check if you can manipulate the bug snacks form like when you already ate a banana and strawberry, but you can have both legs as banana despite that you ate only one. The experiment works, and the conclusion is that bug snacks are actually all the same. They are parasites that only look different, but they work the same and they are the same. As the last experiment, she wants to overdose on bug snacks to fully transform and cut her head off to see if it will grow back as the leg did. But just in time, Snorpy stops her declaring that she's insane and it won't work. She listens to him and keeps her head on, but the entire body is deformed by bug snacks and it will take a long time for her to go back to her previous state. She abandons her research and focuses on rehab with Shelda and gives you the last clue. You gathered everyone in Slagsburg and you are throwing a party to celebrate staying clean. Everyone had some issues with dancing but eventually you managed to encourage everyone to hit the dance floor. Everyone has fun when suddenly an earthquake hits. Agabor arrives to Snacksburg explaining that only Lisbeth can help in this situation and she knows where to find her. You, Agabor and Philbo go to the mountain where the mysterious door are and you open them with the code finally collected. You are about to enter but the ground collapses under your feet. You wake up in what seems to be inside of some big creature. There are bug snacks remains everywhere and the juice flows to the floor. After short exploration you find Philbo but you can't find Agabo anywhere. You explore further and you arrive to a big chamber with a big monstrosity at the end of it. Turns out it's Lisbeth. She became one with Bugsnax and she managed to mutate into their queen. She's not hostile but isn't keen on answering your questions but she does it anyway. She explains that Bugsnax are a parasite that can change the host and not only their body but also behavior and personality. She explains further that Bugsnax are supposed to be highly addictive so a person consuming them can't stop and eventually turns into a mindless pile of bug snacks, aka zombies. The Haram virus found its way to still wreak havoc despite all these years. Suddenly Agabo finds all of you and is heartbroken that Lisbeth turned into such monstrosity. She decides to quickly turn into one too to stay together with Lisbeth. They both want to help everyone to get off the island safely. They both send you flying as a shortcut and you land near Snacksburg, where it all began. It's a total war zone and all bug snacks turned against the town folk. The only way to escape is by the balloon ship you arrived onto the island. Snorpy rebuilds all your tools to make them lethal against bug snacks and you begin to fight. You gather everyone and after a long fight you all nearly die to a big watermelon and pizza bug snack but Lisbeth and Agabo arrive in the nick of time and save everyone. 
You fly off watching entire island getting covered in lava and bug snacks and you can't help but notice how Lisbeth and Agabor accepted their fate. Elizabeth Megafig solved the greatest mystery of this island. I found a door near the frosted peak. What could be behind it? I wonder. <sighs> Wait for me, Liz! Belle? What are you doing out here? Following you. Oh, did you want to come with me? I thought it might be fun to hunt bug snacks together. I, if that's all right with you. That'd be amazing, but maybe not today. This peak isn't for beginners. I've been practicing. I got Chalo to show me the ropes, bro. Ugh. <laughs> Very impressive. I didn't know you were working out. I guess it's hard to see my muscles under the bug snacks. <laughs> you really are changing, Bill. I'm sorry I was being so selfish. It's okay. I don't want apologies, worrying, any of it. I just want us to be together. And to see how much you're exaggerating about your dangerous work. <laughs> oh, really? Think it'll be a walk in the park, huh? That's right. And I bet I can even catch more book snacks than you. Woohoo! You're on! But be careful. Close to giving up back there. I get so caught up dwelling on the way lives end. But that's not the only thing that matters, yeah? Wambus and I, we're gonna start the rest of our lives today. Well, there goes another farm. Serves me right for building it on top of an island sized pest. <laughs> I guess there's no shame in starting fresh. I'll find a place with rich soil, and even richer history, where me and Triffy can settle down. It's funny. I spent all my time chasing one muse, and as soon as I put it out of my mind, another strikes me. As we floated down from the sky, watching our home crumble to dust, a little song sprung into my head. I call it an ode to Gramble. I thought I'd be real sad when I left all my little ones behind. But I feel okay. I don't know, maybe it helps they try to murder me. But also, I got folks who love me back for real. Like, well, Wiggle. Oh, hey, bestie. I think I need a vacay from this vacay. Going home doesn't seem so bad anymore. My old life, my old friends, they're all gone. But like, now I know that I can make new friends. And this time, I won't ruin it for myself. Okay, I know when I'm beat. I draw the line at island full of monsters. <laughs> all I wanted to do was quit my dead-end job and do what makes me happy. I don't need some big bug snack scam to do that. Hey, maybe I'll get started in the music business. While I regret that all my research was destroyed, I have come away with a revelation. I cannot improve Grumpus Kind if I refuse to understand it. It may be a long and frankly annoying endeavor, but it is one worth pursuing. I've never felt so wrong being right. Wish I hadn't wasted so much time telling riddles. I don't need to be all-powerful to give good advice. I just need to be me. And those who listen, will listen. Look at that mess. It seems my enemies aren't so all-powerful after all. But still, there were many close calls, and Chandler was always there for me. I think perhaps I could share everything with him. Bro, that was intense! There's no way I ever would have made it out of there by myself. Good thing Snorpy had my back. When did he get so strong? Maybe I hit my personal limit. The 
that doesn't matter. There's no limit to what we can do together. Hey, buddy. Are you ready to go? All right, everybody. We should head out. I hate leaving it like this. Liz and Egg, what if they're still out there? Yeah. If anybody can survive in that terrible place, it's them. No, you're right. Nobody should ever set foot on Snacktooth Island again. I know. I can't go wallowing in regret now. We're barely even out of the woods. It's gonna take a while for the bug snacks to wear off on us. I can't go back home like this, so... Is it alright if I stay with you for a while? I can help you with your story. Maybe figure out which parts to tell, or... Great. Let's go.